Hello guys, welcome back to the channel and welcome to Bob Fisher Chevrolet. So we've been putting the Cummins back to stock Caitlin and I don't think it's any shock to most of you. It was not any reason for the EPA contacting me or anything like that, even though those comments were pretty enjoyable to watch, but we are actually in the market for a new truck. That being said, I don't wanna go out there and just jump into another Cummins, even though you guys know I am a big Cummins fan. Um, doing something like this, definitely have to take a look at all the options, test drive everything, and just go check everything out in person to see what we're feeling. And that's why we're here, and that's why we're checking out this 2020 Silverado. this 2020 Silverado. This is a three quarter ton truck um, with the new 10 speed Allison. And we will drive it here shortly, but we'll go over the truck. Um, admittedly, the Chevy is not my first choice. Um, not really a big fan of the front ends of these things. They, they are growing on me a little bit, but they just, they're, I don't know. I just don't really, they don't, look like a, that good of a truck to me but they are growing on me so like i said this is the new duramax i think they are 900 and some horsepower or nine 900 horsepower 900 and some foot pounds of torque i can't remember all the facts and figures and i'm not really worried about that we just need something to tow a race truck around eventually we'll, we will probably end up with a trailer um with like living quarters for when we are racing it so something like the fifth wheel and goose deck uh, prep package is a must on a vehicle like this, which all the manufacturers do offer. So all three manufacturers, Ford, Ram, and Chevrolet slash GMC, all these trucks are capable. They all have the power that we need, the torque and all that. So really it's just gonna be C. You know, do we, what do we like about each uh, offering and what do we dislike about each offering? So right now we'll hop under the hood here which this hood scoop is functional which is pretty cool so there she is there is the 6.6 uh, lp5 duramax this is the new engine um, that came out three or four years ago everybody's been raving about them um, but yeah, like I said, all the power, obviously a lot going on in here compared to what we are used to with our Cummins. Um, but yeah, like I said, the factory hood scoop is functional, which is definitely pretty cool. Get tired of seeing hood scoops on stuff and never being, you know, never being functional. So that is pretty good. Uh, but really not much of note. You can't see the turbo. It's covered in heat shrouding and all that. But yeah, so that's the engine compartment. Another thing in here that I don't like, um, if you look here, if we're ever working on the truck, you have a tendency to lay tools and stuff here. Well, as you guys can see, there are gaps in here, I guess, for some heat dissipation or something. That to me, that looks like lost 10 millimeter sockets all day long. Don't really care for that. And also, I thought this was pretty neat. You don't want to shoot your pressure washer into your intake. Uh, so just keep that in mind. But yeah, not really much to see in here. It's a clogged engine bay, but that's what you will get with any of these V8 diesel offerings. Oops. So another thing about this truck, these things just sit high. I mean, just a high sitting truck for a factory truck. I'm six foot tall and it's about up to my shoulder level. I mean, it's just a really high sitting truck. Um, like I said, this is the Duramax with what they call the Allison transmission. So for any of the Chevy guys out there, I hate to break this to you. It's not an Allison. It's, it's a Ford transmission. Ford and GM went in together on these 10 speeds. I believe the 
Um, Chevy designation is the 10L1000 and the Ford designation is the 10R140. So it's the same transmission. I don't know if the shift strategies are the same or different, but internally you have a Ford transmission in your Chevrolet and it's not an Allison, but they're still throwing the branding on there. So everybody thinks it is. So this is the LTZ model, which I think is like more of a middle grade um, to higher trim level, but it has like a pretty basic wheel on it. Nothing real fancy. And really from the outside, this thing has like the chrome package. I'm not really um, big on that. Uh, the chrome on the mirrors and around the windows, not really my thing. Might be something for yours. But one complaint I do have about these, these stupid fender flares, unless you get a white truck i know with a gmc at least that's the only time you can get them paint matched they're always black it kind of makes your higher trim level truck look more like a work truck and i don't particularly care about that care for that another thing i do like though right here is where your plug goes in for your block heater so you can just plug that in you have no cord hanging or banging around or anything like that real nice and convenient but that being said you have to make sure you have your cord so if you come out in the morning from home you just unplug this throw it in the garage and then go to work or whatever you can't plug it back in unless you remember to get your cord so that is a nice thing but it's kind of um also it also kind of stinks because you have to remember to bring your cord if this was like just a regular 120 outlet all you'd need is an extension cord plug it right in so as we move down obviously it has your your grandpa steps which are nice another thing i did notice on the rockers here and I think a lot of the manufacturers are doing this. If you see, it's kind of like a crinkle color or uh, texture. So that way it helps with rock chips and all that. So you can try and protect the underside of your rocker. Um, I think that's a good move because this area tends to get beat up. Moving to the bed, the steps. I don't particularly care for the step. It is actually rather high. Um, me being younger, I always just always step on the wheel if I need to get into the center of the bed. Um, just so I can reach and really with as tall as this truck is like I said, I'm six foot tall I can't touch the bottom of the bed But from an aesthetics point, I don't particularly care for the step on there um, Moving to the back of the truck. We have um, another step in the bumper, which I also feel is completely Unesthetically pleasing and pointless because you can just step on the center of the bumper and step up uh, Yeah, not really my thing um, I would definitely prefer to have a regular bumper on a truck like this. Now, another thing that everybody offers, the push button for the tailgate. That is definitely nice. You just hit the button. You know, if you have a bunch of stuff in your hands, you want to put it in there. Now, this has a power up and down tailgate. But to go power up, you got to find the sweet spot. Oh. So you gotta put the tailgate like three quarters of the way up in order to get it to go up on its own. Um, I don't really see the point of that. You're just gonna end up slamming it up closed like normal anyway, but also another nice feature. We have wireless. So if you are hooking up your gooseneck hitch or whatever, I think there is a button on the inside for it. I'm not 100%, but that is certainly a nice feature. Um, I do like that, but once again, the gooseneck slash um, fifth wheel tow prep uh, prep package and the tailgate is nice and light which is great for closing it um, the one on our Cummins is rather heavy that's for sure so really that's kind of the exterior of the truck not really much of note on the outside honestly from the side they're not really too exciting um, the wheel wells or they're kind of getting away from the whole square wheel well thing, but they're they're really trying to hang in there But it definitely looks better than in years past um, another thing this model has the um, Where you keep the key in your pocket so you just hit this and you can unlock your windows When we move into the interior here, and I'll read it right off the sticker the interior is a Gideon Slash very dark atmosphere. I don't know what that means um, But it gives you a brown dashboard and these you know tannish gray seats it's different i don't know that it's really my thing particularly i think if i was specking one of these i would probably jump for the black interior just my 
personal preference. Does have a Bose sound system, which is nice. Um, also with these Chevys, you have your tow mirrors. So you can be like all the Dodge guys and run your tow mirrors out all the time for some reason. I don't know why people do that, to be quite honest. And then it also has the parking mirrors or for you know when you're parking it so you don't get your mirror ripped off, which is certainly a nice feature that you don't have to do that manually like with our older truck. So now that we are on the interior of the truck, a couple things I noticed. You do have a nice LCD screen here, but this whole area here just seems like it's a, got a lot, seems like it's got a lot of stuff spread out and then this small screen. I would really like to see a bigger screen here. Um, not that it's terrible or anything. It just seems like it doesn't match up. You got all this wide stuff here and it just, to me, it doesn't, it's not as aesthetically pleasing as I would like, but you have your charging mat for wireless charging. Um, of course, exhaust brake, uh, lane keep assist, um, your parking sensors. See, here's your tailgate button so we can uh, lower our tailgate right here from the cab um sunroof the rear window it, uh <clears throat> the sliding glass rear window in the back um also i like these center consoles myself that's what i have in my current uh cummins and i love it i don't really like the old flip-up seats um that everything has always come with but other than that i really do think it's a nice truck inside um it's comfortable that's for sure if we start it one thing I will note, you can hear the engine. It's not noisy, but it certainly makes more noise than I would have anticipated from a newer diesel. Everything else is usually pretty quiet, but then you have your screen here um, with all your options, all your gauges. Obviously, you can change this all around. I'm not going to go through that. There's a ton of different features. Um, one thing that is nice in our Ram now, um, we have oh a little bit of a high oil going on but um in our ram now i wish i had this that is the auto four-wheel drive so if it starts to sense the slip that it's slipping or whatever it will you know lock the transfer case in so it won't spin my truck if i don't have transfer case the um uh, if i don't have traction control on the the thing just spins terribly but the auto four-wheel drive is certainly nice of course you have your your trailer brake stuff um your brake controller here like is standard with everything now another option and i don't really understand it and why the button is so big is kind of beyond me is this one here which opens all of the windows but that being said you can't push it again and close all the windows you have to jump back over here and close them so a case if a case in <clears throat> I guess if somebody passes gas in your truck, you can hit that in a panic and air the thing out. Um, but yeah, you have outlets all over the place. That's another thing I forgot to mention in the bed. There is actually a 120 outlet back there, which is pretty cool. But USB connections, you got uh, USB type C, uh, you, normal USB. And then if we get in the center console here, you have two more, um, plus an SD card. I'm not sure if that's for music or what. Um, the center console, it's definitely a little like kind of stubbier than I would like, um, but it is rather deep. I mean, you might even be able to fit a wine bottle in there. Uh, that thing is really deep. Also, something pretty cool, it still comes with a little change tray. So if you're one that uses cash like myself, you have somewhere to put your change, uh, which is, it's nice, but that's kind of a feature I wouldn't expect a modern truck to have anymore here in 2020. So. All right, well, let's take this thing out and take her for a rip. Um, one thing to note about these trucks compared to the, um, and it's the big difference between the Chevrolet slash GMC offerings compared to the Ford or the Ram, these trucks have an independent front suspension. So it should, one would think at least, I suspect this thing should ride more like a car than a heavy duty truck. Um, but I don't know. Let's get this thing out on the road and uh, see how she drives. So initial driving impressions of the, of the uh, Duramax here, 
it's a bit loud inside for being in modern diesel i mean i think it's louder in my cummins and it's not the best noise it kind of sounds like an old 7.3 but quieter um it just doesn't sound like you know the old i6 i'm used to but um yeah other than that it drives well as you would expect i love the heads up display um where it's telling me my speed and the speed limit of where we're at it's also got the lane keep assist so if i you know veer out of the lane it rumbles the seat so that's pretty good um now when we get onto like a bumpier road we'll see how the suspension is because you know that's the big differentiator from the cummins the power stroke and the duramaxes you have an independent front suspension with the Chevy or the GMC, so it should ride quite a bit better. Um, coming from a solid axle, it's, you know, a harsh ride is something I'm used to, and it's kind of just normal. Will this feel any different? I don't know, but you would expect for it to feel a little better. Um, but yeah, overall driving impressions, the truck drives good. Um, it's it doesn't feel weird in any way shape or form it just feels like normal driving truck um it definitely has a big presence on the hood here um it feels bigger than my cummins is um it just feels wide um the whole infotainment center and all um i like the screen and the navigation but this is just big and blocky and looks kind of weird um but when i'm just driving i can look over everything kind of seems to be where it should be um, yeah, I mean, it's just a normal driving experience. Another thing I don't like um, with the my Cummins, if I didn't want it to shift into overdrive, I could just hit the plus or minus here, and it would it would drop it out of overdrive, and I could, you know, select my gear that way. Here, I got to pull the lever down to do it. It's not a big deal, but it's just something that, you know, this is a brand new truck. You would think that something like that would be better than a, even an old, uh, old pa or Cummins. I mean, it's just... I don't know, it's just something I'm nitpicking about. But now we're at the stoplight, we'll get a little bit of a zero to 60. Um, I don't know what to expect. I know it's not going to be as fast as my truck was um, before we tuned it back to stock, but we'll see. And I really haven't driven the truck since we've made it stock, so I really don't know what, what it's going to feel like. You know, we had that S400 on there, and that thing would just go. All right, zero to 60, not too bad. We got a little wheel spin. Um, I do have the traction control still on, so a little bit of wheel spin and the traction control kicks in. Um, but it still does feel a little sluggish, but then again, I'm coming from a tuned truck. I'm used to that. Um, I don't know if it's derated from the factory in the lower gears or what, but definitely something um, that's different than our tuned truck. I don't know how the other brand new trucks are on the market. Haven't driven any of them yet, but just seems a little bit sluggish. And driving here, going through the gears, um, it doesn't have a gear indicator that I've seen um, to tell me what gear we're in, whether we're in sixth, seventh, eighth, I don't know. But other than the first few gears, like first through say third, you can't really tell that it's shifting. The first few, it's kind of, you know, boom, boom, boom. But after that, the shifting kind of disappears. You don't notice it at all. And it's, yeah, it's just weird having 10 speeds. It legit rides pretty rough. Like back there, the ways I, like, I got two hands on this thing and I'm braced and it's really, oh yeah. I, I mean, it's definitely rise rougher than I ever anticipated. Yeah, you know, like, no, it's it's. I was expecting a lot. It's N shockingly rough, honestly. I wonder how a one ton is. Yeah, so when you look back on the video, this is not me being shaky, dude. Like I got a solid grip on this thing. <laughs> well, it's got in body stabilization, so it might not show up anyway. Yeah, it's, it definitely doesn't ride what I would think. It's it's a rougher ride than I would have anticipated. I mean, yeah, that's oh God, <laughs> that's terrible. 
honestly, like. Yeah, the uh, that's, the, the coil sprung twenty five hundred Dodge has got to be better than that. Yeah, that. It's just, I mean, yeah, that's oh my God, dude. <laughs> that's terrible. Honestly, like. So guys, that was the twenty twenty Chevrolet Duramax. Um, thanks to the guys here at Bob Fisher. If you guys are interested in a new Chevrolet pickup or car, hit up my man Robert Simpson at Bob Fisher. Um, he'll help you out. Tell him I sent you. Um, which, well, maybe you shouldn't. He might give you a worse deal knowing him. Now, I'm just, just breaking his stones, but uh, good dude. Knows all about the cars. He is a, a salesman who is a car guy. So if you have a car question or a truck question, he knows it. He's not just kind of reading stuff off a piece of paper. He knows what he's talking about. But the driving impressions of the 2020 Duramax, um, it definitely rides a lot rougher than I thought it would. Um, I think it rides as good or equivalent to my three quarter ton Cummins. Um, it's not the silky smooth ride that I was hoping that this Chevrolet would have. I really, that was the big thing with the Chevy or the GMC. I would hope that it would ride a lot better and I wasn't really too stoked about how it rode. It, it, it felt pretty harsh for what it was. Now these trucks are made to tow and carry stuff. So if you throw a little weight in the bed, it probably will help that. Now this is a um, LTZ model. It has a little bit better grill. The lower models with the black grill, I can't stand. This looks a little better, but really in order to get a Chevrolet that looks good, I think you need to jump all the way up to the high country package, which I think they have one here, which I'll have to go look and see if they do. I have a high country here. We're right on the road, so hopefully the noise isn't too bad. I definitely prefer the high country front end, the front grill. Um, with the color match bumper as opposed to like the LTZ like we looked at. Um, this grill with the bars definitely looks a lot better to me than that big nose on that uh, LTZ. Yeah, so if I were to get a truck like this, I would definitely shoot for the high country model here with the, uh, the nicer grill, that's for sure. Um, but yeah, really, oh, and I forgot to mention earlier, the mirrors, I can't stand them. They just look like somebody's putting Legos together to put them on there. Um, not really my thing. Also the front ends, like I said, I just, I really can't get over it. Uh, yeah. So guys, you know I'm shopping for a truck. You know we're gonna look at everything. We're gonna hopefully check out a Power Stroke and of course the new Cummins. Um, this is a three quarter ton truck. I'm really actually probably looking for a one ton truck and probably a quad cab short bed like this. Um, like I said, so we can tow the race truck around. I don't want to, I want to be able to take it to ODSS races, whatever. So we're going to need a truck similar to this. Does the truck drive bad? Absolutely not. Not. It drives great. Um, is it the smooth riding experience I was hoping for? No. And honestly, if I bought a truck like this, I would not be standing in front of it much. I just, that front end, it's starting to grow on me a little by little, but I just I can't really get over it to be honest with you guys but it's got the Duramax it's got that new 10 speed automatic and the 10 speed that thing the first couple shifts you you kind of notice the shifting but after that it kind of fades away you don't even notice it it feels great I really wish we could have the opportunity to tell with this thing we didn't but it is what it is so anyway guys let me know your comments down below what do you guys think of the 2020 Duramax um, my impressions good truck Rides a little rougher than I anticipated, but visually, it is not the truck for me, or at least I don't think it will be. So anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this little review of the 2020 Duramax. Put a comment down below what you think. I'll catch you guys on the next one. Get out in your garage, get the wrenching on your truck. <laughs> if I had something like this, I would ride the line everywhere just so it rumbled. <laughs> 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 You a woman or why? What, why are you getting so much satisfaction out of that? I don't know. I'm not used to it. <laughs>